Okay, folks, back here at Thought Spot 2022. Very exciting stuff. Several conversations in the can already. And our next one is a customer. It's always nice to talk to customers because they're the ones who are really making things happen with the technology. And we're going to be talking with Yuroslav Buterin from Canadian Tire. And I have to get the bad pun out of the way right off the bat here where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> That's what you <laughs> so to hit the pedal to the metal. <laughs> pedal to the metal, exactly. All, all that good stuff. <laughs> but tell us about your journey because you were on-prem, you're going to the cloud, you're going to Snowflake. It sounds like you got a whole bunch of pretty significant projects underway to modernize your environment and, and to really leverage the power of data. So tell us, of course, tell us how it all happened. Of course. So um, let's start with the fact that ultimately as our organization has been growing for the last number of dif uh, different years, um, we've looked at how much data we're utilizing on a daily basis. We've looked at how many ad hoc asks are coming our way. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, um, if we were to utilize some of the existing technology that we had in place, well, a lot of our data was stored in, uh, in pizza boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's more difficult each and every single day to ultimately <laughs> address each one of those individual asks, make sure that uh, the data movement does not become expensive. And I'm not just simply referring to um, monetary standpoint. I'm talking about the time that each one of the ETL jobs takes place, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So as we were thinking about our end users, mm -hmm. as well as our ability to kind of scale upon any of these ad hoc ask analysis that's needed for the business, um, ultimately, it's a selection of the BI tool that mm -hmm. comes into place, mm -hmm. as well as the actual technology stack and a decision to move from on-prem data mm -hmm. to um, a specific warehouse, cloud warehouse, that is. And um, we decided to go with Snowflake, and uh, Snowflake actually has a great partnership with ThoughtFarm. Now, you can ask me why Snowflake specifically and ThoughtFarm, probably. So uh, from ThoughtSpot standpoint, we wanted to make sure that we do accommodate for the ad hoc usage mm -hmm. of each one of our analysts because none of the asks that each one of the business units has or each one of the individuals has would be um, kind of standard. They're all unique, right? right? So we're looking at each one of the BI tools as we went down the journey to accommodate for all of those aspects. Now, Snowflake um, was a great partnership uh, from the standpoint of optimizing our, all of our queries, mm -hmm. from allowing us to implement as many data sets as fast as we could, and then ultimately it works in collaboration with ThoughtFarm. Mm -hmm. um, one element that we all gotta keep in mind is ultimately governance of all of that data. The end user, not care where the data comes from. They just want to <laughs> make sure that uh, if they query something, they query the right data and with the right parameters, whether it's cleansed or not. So um, lots of rigor goes into the data governance aspect of things, whether it's role level security, mm -hmm. because as we have data floating out there in the Canadian entire universe uh, among different business units, we want to make sure some of the confidential PII data is protected and it's not necessarily available to anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. And then from the other standpoint is ultimately we want to make sure that the business rules are implemented and take effect in any of the marts that people are querying so that again there is no question of well I pulled this data point and it's different than the other data point. Then it just deviates from driving analytics to discussing the validity of the data. Right, really? right, which wastes everyone's time. I mean, Absolutely. Right? right, and it also creates a lot of frustration and it lowers trust in the data, and we all know what happens when you don't trust the data is you don't use the data, right? Of course, you, you don't use the data, <laughs> or then you become slower in making some of the decision-making mm -hmm. that's necessary to drive the growth of the business. Ultimately, mm -hmm. we're all capitalists. It comes down to a natural progression of your sales margin inventory evaluation. Right, right. right. And I like what the folks at ThoughtSpot talk about when they say they're trying to help their clients, their customers become more proficient with data. 
and let's face it, in, in a company like Canadian Tire, well, you're a product company. You have lots and lots of customers. You have lots of suppliers. You have lots of resellers. There are lots and lots of things to keep track of. That's a very, very complex world, right? I mean, the whole supply chain world, I'm sure, for a company like Canadian Tire is not a small challenge to, to deal with. It, it's funny that you hit on supply chain. So I recently uh, taken on the role within our <laughs> supply chain department. Great time to start <laughs> that wonderful <laughs> job uh, with container shortages and inventory to everything. And, and raw material stuff. So from the standpoint of accessibility of data, accessibility mm -hmm. of the insights, I'll be honest, I would not be successful at my job at all if I did not have uh, a tool such as ThoughtSpot. Part of it is, as we're learning the business, as the questions come up, due to the variety of different aspects and reasons, mm -hmm. um, it's just easier to drill down rather than asking an army of my analysts to do it for me. So I become self-sufficient, mm -hmm. that's one, mm -hmm. saves me a ton of time. Second one is, as I'm the one who's querying, searching the information, I understand more about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's so right. Tying back to your point of data literacy, it doesn't necessarily have to just apply to the business analysts. Mm -hmm. It's any end user, uh, whether it's an executive, whether it's a co-op, whether it's a new grad that we have in the organization. So um, something like ThoughtSpot just just naturally enables it and accelerates it so much faster. Yeah. yeah. I really love the exploratory side of ThoughtSpot. And I was talking with Amit Prakash a few minutes ago about where we've come from in this industry. And let's face it, a data warehouse tends to be kind of boxy, right? And we're trying to fit this multi-dimensional world into a relatively, a significantly simpler construct, right? And we did that for a variety of reasons. One was for performance. Uh, one was just to be able to tackle some of these challenges 10, 20 years ago, but the world is very, very multidimensional. And it's a changing environment too, right? Schemas change all the time these course, days because of, of needs. And so what I love about the ThoughtSpot approach is that it, it allows you to really immerse yourself from any question, from any point uh, around the superset of data you could just, well, you know, what are our top three suppliers or what are the three suppliers that are the, have the most uh, tardiness in, in delivering? And then what impact will that have on my, on my production environment, right? Like which cars or which, which products won't I be able to, to cater to Absolutely. because of this? And, you know, it, again, in supply chain, I mean, what, when everything went up in the air and you had all these borders closing, I mean, you had to think that there are supply chain engineers and managers everywhere. Just, oh, the feeling in their <laughs> stomach. It's like, oh of no, course. what yeah. am I going to do? Yeah. And to your point, it's so powerful to be able to explore through all the possible options. And, and the key is to get to these answers very quickly, such that you don't truncate the thought process. Of course. Because once you have to call someone else in, now that thread dies. Now you could pick it up again later on once you get the answer, but you've kind of lost the energy there, it seems to me, it's right? The energy, some of the misinterpretation that could take place. And what you're also hitting on is the fact that if your data within ThoughtSpot or ultimately any BI tool is staged correctly, and I'll elaborate on what I mean by that, okay. is uh, you can get at those multiple KPIs that you mentioned within a matter of seconds. So you mentioned something that's very near and dear to my heart and where we were very successful in the implementation and we're able to drive thousands of users is a uniform data set, and we call it a super fact, that has all the permutations and the combinations of all of our skew day store combinations mm -hmm. and all of the KPIs wow. together. So we're talking about sales and margin and corporate inventory and retail inventory, returns, I don't know, all sorts of wonderful things that you can just query all at once. As you can imagine, it's a huge data set. It's robust. It requires quite a bit of processing. Mm -hmm. It requires quite a bit of structuring up front. But once you unlock that, that provides then the one universe 
of all of these permutations and combinations for the user. That way, they don't, they don't have to think about different data sources and how to cobble something together and what if they query it a little bit wrong, then export it outside, and then you, you're just losing that power of the instance. Right? That's so right. It took a lot of time to make sure that the data and the structure of the data is there in place to answer some of the questions that you ultimately posed and get get posed to me, or well, I post myself, uh, on a daily basis, right? Like whether we're looking at where a particular container is, mm -hmm. whether it's on the water and still somewhere in Asia or was delivered in the port of uh, delivery in Vancouver, mm -hmm. uh, or something as simple as how much inventory do we have in trailers sitting outside of our warehouses waiting to be ingated. Mm -hmm. So that, that becomes so critical because then you can start pinpointing certain products and SKUs that are relevant right. to the season, to the customer, That's right. that are driving those sales and all of right. that wonderful stuff. Right? Well, and you, you can know where to marshal your resources, right? You can know, guess what? We're not going to be able to make these SKUs because we're not going to have the products. So what are some alternatives to that? We know we can tell these teams to stand down for the next week or two weeks. Take your vacation now, guys. You know, go home for a while. Well, to me, the last couple of years, in all honesty, I, I like to call them years of prioritization, right? Mm -hmm. So as soon as COVID hit, um, as our organization provides a lot of the uh, hard goods, right? So they're not perishable product. The demand just started going through the roof. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it was a matter of making sure that we do satisfy the customer demand, but by prioritizing the resources, by prioritizing um, some of the investments that we have, what drives the analytics behind those investments? Mm -hmm. Data. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that, right? Yeah. And to me, uh, yes, the COVID has subsided quite a bit, but now it's been a couple of years, um, whether it's manufacturers, whether it's some of our customers, uh, things are starting to settle down, but it's still going to be increased demand for the next little while or a lot of volatility in there. So mm -hmm. prioritization is key for the next couple of years. Yeah. Well, and that's always one of the questions I ask when I learn about these technologies. How will this technology change my day-to-day -day life, my minute-to-minute -minute life, like physically what I do all day? How is it going to change that? And the key is you, you want to be able to expedite things. You want it to be able to open new doors, to, to, to prompt new questions. And the bottom line that I always ask is, what should I be doing right now? Right? And the more information you have, as a, especially as a business owner or department head or whatever the case may be, the better you're going to be able to make optimal decisions. It may not be the, the, the best decision you've ever made, but at least it's informed, and at least you're kind of on the right track. Mm -hmm. right? It, get, it gets back to this concept of morale that I was mentioning to Amit. When morale is high, good things happen. And morale is high when people have the tools and the, the data to get something done to find the answer, right? Morale goes very low when you don't have the tools, when you can't get the data, that's frustration, of course. right? Frustration of course. leads to, it leads to people quitting, <laughs> the re great resignation, right? Of course, and uh, where I think uh, probably as you've spoken to Amit about the, the product, it's not necessarily just simply about search, it's also a combination of the other features, mm -hmm. uh, Spot IQ, Mm -hmm. uh, the wonderful development page. Mm -hmm. uh, so to your point, how do I get to the inside faster? Mm -hmm. Yeah, anybody can, can do the search and then it will take time and it's all replicated multiple, multiple times. But with Spot IQ, we started leveraging it more and more, especially when it comes down to our loyalty information. It starts um, navigating and tagging some of the outliers in the customer spend that we see, whether it's demographic, whether it's uh, regionality or anything like that, right? So as a product, ThoughtSpot allows you an environment right. of the tools to get to the inside faster. It's not just simply about the search. The, the, the product team is ultimately developing the evolution, as you were referring to it, the technology that will satisfy the needs years and years from now, right? Yeah. And I love Spot IQ. I was talking about uh, that with Amit as well. 
because it, I think people just enjoy watching an engine run, right? And with Spot IQ, you're like, well, just go ahead and find me something. Let's yeah. see what it digs up. And because the ideas are like crystals, right? If you think about how rain forms, you need a little tiny speck for the, the first water molecule to attach on, then another molecule, and then it drops, right? You hit this, yeah. the barometric pressure drops, and, and you get something changing. And that always starts with ideas, like with just little thoughts. And this is why you have conversations with people. This is why you explore the data. But to get that kernel of an idea, that, that little possible crystal, hmm, what is going on over here in this particular region? That's what you're facilitating. And when you do that in an environment that captures all these queries that you've put and that maps them all and then ultimately will optimize delivery when it sees that people are, are really looking for this information, that's when you're really getting somewhere and you can learn dynamically from the entire ocean of users that are in your system, right? Of course, absolutely. And um, ultimately the key to that as well as, yes, there's the engine, there's the algorithm. You still have to be mindful and thoughtful on what it is that you're trying to serve. Right. No, no <laughs> product is just gonna randomly find all the wonderful <laughs> outliers within supply chain for me if I just snap my fingers, right? So it's, it ties back to the original comments that we had, data literacy. Right. If folks within the organization are literate um, when it comes down to their data stack, then utilization of such features as Spot IQ just becomes so much more powerful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. Well, what's next on the uh, on the roadmap for Canadian Tire here? Pardon the pun, but where what what challenge are you going to try to tackle next? Um, so from our standpoint, more data sets, mm -hmm. um, expansion upon our loyalty um, data sets that we recently just implemented, uh, and ultimately structuring and evolving that wonderful super fact that I referred to because the number of KPIs just keeps on growing and um, in order to kind of speed up the, the insights we tend to just put it outside of the wonderful super fact table and causes multiple data sources so to me it's a matter of just still keeping true to the fundamentals of one unique data source that anybody and everybody within the organization can use so we're going to focus on that and then lastly we we love partnering up with ThoughtSpot because they don't necessarily treat us purely as a customer. They truly treat us as a, as a partner. So it's a voice at the table in terms of some of the features, some of the little nuances that we bring up and the team is always willing to listen and um, whether it's down the road be implemented or just thought about as one of the potential tweaks mm -hmm. or enhancements or features down yeah. the road. I love it. Well, folks, we've been talking to Yaroslav Buterin from Canadian Tire. Thanks so much for your insights and for sharing how you get these things done. You're, you're taking us on the road to success. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, thank you. Great job. Thank you.